and welcome back. So, it's a new kit and it's a new series. So in this series we are looking at the Mishpit 108 uh, from Eddard, of course, as always, 148 scale. And it's stunning. I absolutely love it already. I haven't obviously gotten very far because I've only done the cockpit section, which obviously this episode is all about. Um, but it's brilliant. Um, as always, and I think it's something you come to expect from Eddard, is, you know, real good level of detail. And I've got to say, I'm sure Eddard really, really do do their homework um, when they do their kits, because I've done only a couple of their, their kits um, in recent times. And the, the detail is absolutely fantastic. Now, I've always used um, their... Uh, etched upgrades um, for a lot of models uh, I've done uh, in the past and again these are absolutely excellent detail they are so accurate um, you know you really can't um, you can't I can't fault them personally I think they are absolutely brilliant um, and in this kit is really no different um, it comes with um, colored uh, etched parts um, with stuff like uh, seat belts, um, the uh, cockpit instrument panel, and there's there's various other little uh, details in there as well. But again, the kit itself also is massively accurately detailed. Um, and to be honest with you, it's one of those kits that you know you can just build it and pretty much leave it as it is. There's no real need for any you know fettling or messing about and you know adding uh, bits and pieces. But, in saying that, it probably wouldn't be one of my models if I didn't make it that little bit harder for no particular reason. So, um, with that in mind, it will come up soon enough. Um, so let's just jump into the kit and um, I think you'll, you'll probably see what I mean. So jumping straight into it, as we said, um, I've got everything laid out and ready uh, to go there, as you can see. And it's a nice, quick, uh, and easy uh, build. Uh, there's an option uh, for the cockpit to have uh, the back seat as a full bench seat or to have uh, auxiliary uh, fuel tanks. And as you can see, I decided uh, to go for the auxiliary fuel tanks as it's probably something a little bit different. Normally when you see these, you usually see the full bench seat uh, in the back, uh, but I decided as it was somewhat different. Um, I decided to go for those auxiliary tanks. Now I've decided for some reason to go for the more difficult option of uh, putting everything uh, all together. Um, as where normally I'd probably paint the seats completely separately so I could fit the uh, seat belts in. Um, so straight off the bat I've made things a lot more uh, difficult. Um, but as you can see the uh, tanks in the back are quite simple uh, to put in. There's only one drill hole uh, that needs to be made for that lower um, auxiliary tank there, um, but there's already a space uh, in the rear for the rear one. So of course some of the most difficult parts to clean up are stuff like uh, the control columns, especially when they've got the uh, fabric at the bottom. Just using some uh, Tamiya Extra Thin, run that down the sides, um, rub it a little bit and it should take all those seam lines out. Now of course very quickly, straight into paint, and I decided to just on the inside of the panel lines, um, throughout the side walls and the main um, a light white, and then over the top using um, again, Vallejo white and a splodge of black um, just to make that as a, a light grey. Now I've painted the seats uh, again using uh, Vallejo uh, game colours. Uh, I've used uh, Beast Brown uh, originally with a splodge of black. Uh, decided that wasn't light enough, um, sorry, dark enough even. And went over it with uh, Vallejo Dark Umber and then working my way up with that 
and the bee spray, lighten it all the time um, to almost just pure uh, bee spray. Just to highlight um, all the ridges in the seat. And then uh, as I go further on, I'll just add a smidgen of Leo White. So as you know, you can see I'm using the uh, pretty much just Vallejo White just to cap uh, the top of those seats. Now next what I want to do is I want to sort of uh, show a bit of wear because obviously this is going to be, um, I should probably explain that this is going to be based out in uh, one of the Libya markings. So obviously it's going to be quite sunny and hot. Um, so a lot of bleaching is going to be in there as well. So I've just mixed a little bit of blacky brown um, just to simulate the fact that you know people have been sitting there and just a bit of warm, maybe a little bit of sweat uh, in there as well. So we move on to the first uh, of the um, colour brass parts. Um, I think this is something to do. I should know this really, but it's I think it's the uh, part of the trim uh, on the um, aileron tabs, and these fit in uh, really nice. Uh, and easy uh, there's no major um, fettling with this it just sticks all together really really nicely So I'm going to move on to more of the weathering and just to show a bit of scuffing and a bit of wear, all I've done is um, using my base colour, which was that black and um, white, and just lighting that a little bit further um, and just giving you a couple of scuff marks uh, across all them sort of areas that are most likely going to get knocked about. Then I move on to some more uh, heavier scratching. I've used uh, MIGS st uh, steel. Uh, now you can't see it very well here, but I actually stippled it on uh, with a sponge and then making some of those uh, chipping slightly a bit, a little bit larger and just adding some straight up um, scuffing. Um, again, on them sort of areas, they're gonna get knocked about. So raised edges, uh, mainly where they're gonna get uh, knocked the most.
then finally using uh, Tamiya's uh, panel liner um, accent color using the dark brown I mainly put these around some of the recessed areas uh, but I did few, put a few splodges in there as you can see and what I'm going to do this with this is basically add this as a filter so it's going to add sort of a grimy layer and all we're going to do is use some uh, white spirits just to remove any excess in areas that we don't want particularly around the strapping around those uh, auxiliary tanks as you can see it's quite uh, deep and I don't want it to be that deep and again you know just smearing uh, what I've blobbed um, on the cockpit floor this will give us um, sort of like a, a if you like a dirt layer or, or a film um, of dirt again given that sort of um, more used look of the cockpit As you can see, this is a quite simple and easy process and gives really, really, really good, um, you know, results and effects of, you know, a used weathered item, aircraft, car, tank, whatever you like. Um, it's a great, um, you know, product to use across, you know, many uh, different things. So now here comes the main part I said that I had to make things more awkward for myself. I decided to try and put some of the fuel lines in uh, for the auxiliary tank. All I used was some 0.32mm uh, floristry wire. Um, it's very flexible, but as you can see in this sort of area I've had to uh, dry fit the side wall um, to get the wire um, or the, the, the profile of the pipe in. Um, right as you can see it was uh, very fiddly but in the end the results uh, I think uh, add a nice uh, little addition uh, to the cockpit even though a large chunk of this probably really won't be uh, very well seen but I'm hoping the fact that because it's a massively glazed cockpit you probably will be able to see these now what I'm doing here is using um, thin strips of masking tape super glued uh, to the wire and these just to um, sort of emulate the bracings um, or fixtures um, the piping will be attached to the inner wall of the cockpit and then all I did was paint them uh, using Tamiya uh, black rubber now before I start fitting all those wires in because I want to well I need to put the uh, inner walls in uh, at the same time I move on to uh, the seat belt. These are in certain areas, particularly with the uh, waist strapping, they're in about uh, three parts. Um, you've also got to try and turn um, like the buckle over. Um, yeah, it is a little bit fiddly, um, but people um, of you, well, you guys that are thinking of um, particularly um, you know, using brass sets, you haven't used it before. And think it's a daunting process it's not really um, once you've got into it tried it and you know you, you, you get used to it it's not really that bad and to be honest with you I actually find it uh, quite fun uh, to do these things um, but again the overall effect that you'll get um, from these um, is well worth it probably start with just simple uh, basic seat belts and then you know maybe work your way through to more um, you know complicated um, etch sets but honestly it's well worth um, you know doing these they really do make your models um, just come that little bit more um, to life if you like um, and just it's just always I think a nice little added addition uh, to your model 
Now to make these look a little bit older and a bit used, again I've used um, that panel uh, accent liner, uh, the dark brown again, and um, with a cotton swab, um, just take some of that excess off um, and that will sit in to any of the grooves and any of that print uh, on the front of the belt. So now comes the really fiddly part, particularly this major part of um, pipe work that I've done. I tried to fix it as much as possible um, before putting the side wall in. Um, you know, was a bit of fettling uh, to get there, but in the end, it wasn't too bad. Um, just took, um, you know, just a large bit of time just to try and get it all uh, in the right place. But as I'm sure you guys will agree, does look pretty good uh, for after spending I think probably about nearly 45 minutes <laughs> probably trying to get all these wire um, in the right places. So there we go guys that's the cockpit all done and dusted um, this is, I'm pretty happy with it actually I'm really really happy with it uh, I, I, th I think it's great this is the level of detail is you know he's excellent I might add uh, a few smaller details in there. I've got some stuff in my head. Um, I might have to sort of scratch build those and that's not really massively my forte. Um, but I'm gonna give it a go. So the reason that it hasn't been put into the video is because I'm not sure how I'm gonna uh, tackle it yet. Um, it's only probably gonna be something like a, like a, a, a brief, not a brief, like, you know, a case, brief case carry case kit boat whatever you want to call it um so that will probably if it does happen <laughs> we will probably see that a little bit uh later on uh probably when we come into the part of the build where we start putting the cockpit in um to the fuse large so I'm not making any promises just putting it out there um next episode is going to be uh looking at uh the engine build and probably most likely painting that uh, in that same video uh, as well so all I have to say now is thank you very much for watching I'm glad you've made it this far um, if you have enjoyed it and also if you're new here um, please leave a like uh, a comment um, dislike if you didn't like it if you didn't like it please give us a comment so I can make it uh, better um, and try and you know sort that problem out um, but yeah, like and subscribe to the channel uh, and also you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. So until next time, I'll see you soon.